So guys, it's time for a new devlog about the side scroller project, the weekend side scroller project, which I'm working on since quite some weeks. And for that, I heavily extended my ALS version and made it work for yeah, side scroller views like this one. So we can move into the camera direction. We can move into the background and we can jump left and right and so on and we can also use this custom mouse cursor so it's it's not it's not a normal mouse cursor because it would not work because here we need the world locations which we will cover in a few seconds but at first i want to explain a little bit more how this works so i'm using here the control rotation of els and i can rotate the character into this yeah, rotation basically or direction and it's using the turn in place system. If I press the Y key, you will see the shapes which I use. And this blue column is basically the view direction of the character. So here it's not moving because we are using the, if I press the E key, we are using the rotation mode velocity direction. So if I press the D key, we will move to the right. If I press the A key to the left, W key into the direction into the direction of the background, S key, back to the direction of the camera. And yeah, pressing the right mouse button will enable aiming and then turn in place system gets triggered from ELS. It's very easy to work with. I really like it. And yeah, so if we move more to the right, we will get into the next view. So here it's a fixed view to uh, basically indicate for the player that he can shoot into the background with this with this not pistol with this rifle and we also still aim into this direction of the mouse cursor and here if i enable the debugging view so there's a lot of debug commands already here you will see it's a white sphere basically which is yeah the lane of the or the plane of the character and if we look here this is the blue one which is the trace hit location of the system and it tries to find yeah, a, a specific spot where, it, where we can aim at so if you move with the character around we can use also the turn and play system and it will trigger the rotation of the character the only issue i'm currently having is the following if you if I disable debug view and take a look at the character if i move here it's it's a very weird <laughs> yeah transition basically i don't like it here I will use and lerp basically to smoothen the sweep a little bit so that it's not it's not that janky anymore. And yeah, we can yeah lose the strafing system of ALS if we enable aiming, or if we go back, we can also sprint of course. If we go back, so here you will see that it's using aiming of course again automatically i just need to change the controls a little bit so currently if i press the right mouse button the velocity direction will be enabled again and you can sprint here around but i want that the aiming is always active and you need to use strafing here as a player so yeah that's very nice and as you see if you go back here again we can shoot into the plane of the character basically the rotation he has currently so left and right, like in a normal side scroller, in this direction or in this direction. And if we walk here, you see that the line traces go into the background, so we can shoot at the background here. It's quite precise for most stuff already. I will improve the precision even more, even further. In the next devlog, maybe I show it. And yeah, you might wondering why we see those blue lines, right? That's the traces of the weapon. But we can also here with a custom command we can ex we can enable the projectile um, trajectory and then we can see that it's moving around here. It's, it supports penetration and ricochets and also as you see well, it might not see very well. Maybe let me go into this direction again and shoot in this direction. So if you shoot many bullets. You see that we here have the color coding. That's the projectile I'm using in all my projects. It's a physically simulated projectile, which also has some drag and you can configure it and so on. There's a lot of settings. It's also a customized implementation. And yeah, you might wondering, yeah, we have side scroll of view. So 
looking left and right, shooting left and right. We can shoot into the background of the world and also we have also top-down mechanics like here. So everything is fully dynamic and also the keys will be remapped. So before here I was pressing D and A to move left and right. If I press W and S I will move uh, into the background or closer to the camera. If I go here into this uh, camera on, on this area, that's a better word, into this area, I can press the W key to move forward. So it's it's mapped basically, the keys get mapped, the D key to the right, A key to the left, S to the back. And you can see this also with those two debugging arrows. So they indicate, they show the red one is the forward direction, sorry, and the right one the green one that's the right direction and if you go back to this spot here you see that you've seen that it gets remapped so let me go into slow motion so take a look at the arrows basically so i'm still i'm still moving 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 with the s key it gets not remapped yet it only gets remapped if i stop moving with the character now you see forward is now the w key it's the red arrow we can then walk into this direction and as we are still using the turn and place system or, or the aiming rotation mode we will use strafing here so yeah it's almost quite complete when it comes to player control there's only minor things I'm, I'm missing but yeah you might wondering how does it work how can it transition between those areas with the controls right and yeah this is quite a bit complex let me explain it in, in, in a very few uh, short sentences and hopefully you then get the concept so what i'm doing here is the following i'm using camera volumes it's an open source project written in c plus and customize it for my use cases and here we have the cameras where we can set the view basically and see it in a preview and can also move it around and we also, mm, let me see if I can show it, yes I can. Here we have the specific aiming classes basically. And here we're using the aim class for the side scroller background. And if we go here, it's this one. And it's a very small interface basically. Oh, it's not the base class. We need to take care of the, the base class. Here we have the event graph and we get called Within this event, if we have some values changed for the axis of the mouse and also left and right, and then we calculate a relative vector basically. So we get the current one and then we set the new value. And this works pretty fine, as you have seen before, very smooth controls. And yeah, these are basically the Custom nodes I implement in C++ and expose it to blueprints. So here we can get the current controller, which is the player using, and here we can get the current relative location because the system also supports that you have multiple aiming yeah, aiming classes basically, which drive the relative location, and only one can be active, and it's only active if you move if you have a value greater than a specific threshold and then you can set the value again because this value is not exposed or it's not available as member as a member variable it's available as a member variable in c++ not in blueprint and then if if this one is active you this function will get called and we can get the controller and then work with stuff for example get the camera manager if it is valid we can calculate the relative location we use basically the camera location so in the side scroll view which is it that's side scroll view and we use the x and z plane basically and override the y with the location of the player basically and then we can return this one and so we get aiming working same for background there's a little bit different let me check where is the background so this one is this one is the background there we have also no 
all that's for aiming. No, this one is for aiming, it's different. Sorry, for aiming, guys, it's different. For the location of the mouse cursor, not. As we have seen, I can show it again. Let me play the game again. So let me see if I have. No, oh, yeah, I have enabled it. So if we go, make a full screen again. If we go into this area here, we will see that we have two locations. Basically, this is the mouse cursor, which is always in the plane of the player, depending on the view. And here we have the, the aim location, basically the hit location we want to shoot at. And yeah, that's how the system works. Same was implemented for top-down controls. Oh, let me play again and show you this one as well. So for top rounds, we can also shoot into these directions, but it's always the, the same height, like the looking or the, the, the weapon basically. And yeah, that's that's how the side scroller stuff works. And yeah, it's it's very powerful. So it has some minor issues like here, which I will fix soon as well. <laughs> Hopefully I didn't fall fall down. And here the Lyra stuff has some issues. I don't know yet why I'm using the Lyra modeling tools to block out the level. But the thing which I wanted to share with you guys as well is this one here. This guy here, it's very interesting. He's using the animation blueprint from a Caragon character, but still using the ELS base class to drive the movement of the character. And it works quite fine. There's only a small foot sliding at some, at some cases. I think the animations are not properly for this character. So I will, I might change it. Maybe not because it's only top down. You might not see it as a player, so don't tell anyone. Mm. Yeah, and it's also playing a montage. So if you are close at the enemy, he will try to hit us. Yeah, sure. There's no uh, hit reaction system set up yet, and the AI is not properly coded yet. But I'm still focusing on the player controls. And also, uh, sadly, I cannot show this one yet because it's not set up properly here in this level, we can also still use the third person camera controller or manager from ELS and transition between them as well. And this works the following, like the following. So here we have those camera volumes and in this camera volumes we can set, let me see if it, expo if it is exposed or not, I think not. We can set in the base class here we will have no we need to go back sadly i missed <laughs> i missed the red line so how can we open this one again so we could close so here we can yeah also set camera behavior basically and this works the following so i can ask the player so get controller then we cast this to player controller yeah this is quite painful but i will change the api here slightly so that, that it gets more easier then we can say get camera manager camera manager and with this camera manager we can cast this to player camera manager and here we can set the behavior basically. Yeah, it's it's a bit complicated. We use camera behavior. And here I'm currently having customized one for the project, then the normal one, the fixed camera, which we have seen before in this side scroller stuff, and the third person. Fixed camera basically, as I said, is based on camera volumes. And I yeah, customized it for my use cases. Before I did not support properly those enter and leave volume stuff and I introduced this and also some more functions like, mm, where is it? Can we see this in the base class? Yeah, this player aim guide stuff was extended so that we can set it on the pawn. Yeah, I think and that's, that's pretty much is it. So it's quite powerful. And hopefully soon 
I can share a first release build so that you can also play around with it. But yeah, the, I might to take care more about the AI <laughs> and also work more about or improve and polish the environment. And then we can shoot around with all views and also with controller support. There I'm already working on it. So yeah, I really like, I really hope that you liked this devlog about the side scroller stuff. And I'm looking forward to your feedback and see you in the next one.